Hi everyone, welcome to Soundbake. It's me, Kirsten. Let's make some music and get it out there. Today, I want to talk to you about one of the fundamental things you need to know as a composer's assistant or as a media composer yourself. I want to tell you what a sample library is and why it is so fundamental to be able to use them to their fullest, to be able to be more efficient and to create something really unique. First thing, a virtual instrument, a sample library, software instrument are all the same things. There are a lot of terms that are used to describe this one piece of software, but normally people will talk about this software by saying sample library or virtual instrument. So a sample library is a collection of recordings that normally have a theme, so that theme could be by instrument, so by violin or cello, or it could be uh, related to a soloist or an ensemble. Uh, but a sample library is a collection of recordings that have a theme that are placed within a piece of software that allows you to trigger these recordings on demand via MIDI data. Now, if you don't know what MIDI is, then uh, a brief description is that it's a communication system that is used between pieces of software or pieces of hardware and software within your computer. But a sample library is a collection of recordings that have a theme that are placed within software and re-triggered via MIDI data. Simple. When you're talking about recordings that you are using to make your sample library, once these recordings are put into your sample library, into the software, they're now called samples. And the reason is that when you are recording the sound source to make your sample library, you are taking snippets, you are sampling the sound source and then putting it into software in order to make a virtual instrument. It all makes sense. Now what you actually receive when you buy a sample library is a folder. <laughs> this folder has other folders inside and within those you have the samples. You also have the information that the software needs to be able to turn these samples into a sample library. Now because you're just receiving a folder, you need to be able to load your sample library into another piece of software for it to be able to be playable and for it to turn into a virtual instrument rather than just a folder with some recordings in. This software is called Contact. Contact is made by Native Instruments. So there is an industry front runner in regards to the software that you need to use. And this is simply because when people build their sample libraries, they build them in Contact, which is what Soundpaint does you are probably going to need to buy the full version of Contact to be able to use the sample libraries for more than the demo time, which I think is half an hour or maybe even 15 minutes for some libraries. But basically, if you don't buy the full version of Contact, unfortunately, you won't be able to use your sample libraries and then you probably won't be able to work unless you are unbelievably fast at writing music, which most of us are not. Well. <laughs> So what you actually do is basically you open contact and you load your sample library into that via the button at the top of contact that says load. You find the file within the folder that you are given when you buy your sample library that is an NKI file. It has the name of the sample library dot NKI. That's what you're looking for. You load that into contact, you drag and drop or you press the button at the top of contact and basically then you have a functioning instrument that uses the samples that are in the folder that you bought. Having loaded your sample library into contact, it's all well and good, you can use it to make sound. However, it's not yet linked to your door, your digital audio workstation. In order to be able to record the MIDI information and have that work with your sample library, which is in contact, you need to be able to either link contact via something like Vienna Ensemble Pro, to your door, or load contact straight into your door and then load your sample library into contact. Now we're actually gonna make a step-by-step -step guide on how to do both of these things, how to load contact 
into something like Vienna Ensemble Pro and then how to connect that with your door. And we're also going to make a video on how to load contacts straight into your door. So don't worry, they will be coming. Just keep an eye out on the channel. I wanted to talk about how the idea of sample libraries is fundamental to media composers. And they are fundamental for a number of reasons because they allow composers to do certain things. A media composer will use sample libraries to create a template for when they start their projects. A lot of composers will set up a template that has an outline of the orchestra. They will have a string section, the woodwinds, the brass, the percussion, and all of the other miscellaneous instruments that they might want to represent within a bare bones template. Something that they can go into and just have ideas flowing through them without having to stop to load instruments all the time. This is something that sample libraries allow composers to be able to do very, very quickly because you can save these templates and then just load them up straight away and then get composing. Once a composer has actually started composing, eventually they're going to need to show their clients what they've been doing. At some point, a client is going to want to see some of the music and how it relates back to the project as a whole. Sample libraries are a brilliant tool that composers have to be able to create music, to create mock-ups in a way that means that they are of such high quality that they resemble the sound of the music that is going to come at the end of the process. This is something that is really important when working with, with any client, with directors or other composers even, or producers. You need to be able to communicate your ideas in a way that is efficient and gets your idea across without having to encourage the other party to use their imagination so that they can't quite work out how your music is working with their project. So sample libraries, when you know how to use them correctly, when you know how to get the most out of them to make them sound uh, not only realistic, but to have character and a personality, they enable you to make music that sounds good from the very beginning so that you're impressing clients from the very beginning. And then it means that they're going to love the project even more. They're going to love your contribution to the project and hopefully they're going to ask you back. Sample libraries are a wonderful tool to be able to create a bridge between your ideas in your mind and getting them out to show your clients. Now, sample libraries don't only appear in mock-ups. Actually, they can appear in the final score. Sometimes they appear alongside recordings of other instruments. So say, for example, you've recorded a violin line and you've done it with uh, your MIDI instruments and your virtual instruments. And now you've had the opportunity to work with a real musician and re-record that line in a studio and put that into the score. Sometimes you will be replacing the MIDI information that you had in your mock-up with your sample libraries with this real recording. Sometimes you just want to keep them together to add them up to bulk up the sound that you have. It really depends on the project, but just because you're using sample libraries within your mock-ups and as a means of communicating your ideas to your clients, it doesn't mean that they will not appear in the final product, which is why it is so important to be able to know how to get the most out of your sample libraries from the very beginning. It's not enough just to make a, a terrible sounding mock-up and then send that to someone hoping that they understand your ideas and then saying, oh, it's fine because it will be recorded afterwards anyway. If you have sounds that cannot be re-recorded like synths or other electroacoustic sounds, then those sounds will need to be made polished, so to speak. They will need to be of high quality in the beginning to then be present within the final soundtrack. It's not only composers that work closely with sample libraries, assistants to media composers also work very closely with sample libraries. They might not be doing a lot of the writing unless they're uh, in a lucky position to be asked to do additional music or arrangements or other such creative tasks, but they are working on the back end of projects to be able to keep the composer doing what they do best, which is writing music. Depending on the types of jobs that you are asked to do, and not all assistants are asked to do the same types of things, you might be asked to generally look over the upkeep of the composer's sample libraries. And by that, I mean, you might be in the position, which is quite fun, to be able to buy libraries for the composer. You might be able to search through all of the new libraries and say, right, these are really great, let's get these. And the composer says, yep, yeah, okay. But then the next task that is more common 
is downloading, installing and upgrading your sample libraries. It is fundamental for a composer's assistant to know, if not how to use the sample library, but at least how to order these sample libraries in the computer system of the composer and also be able to work out when things need to be upgraded, how they are upgraded and what it means to generally keep these sample libraries in a functioning status. Now, it's not only sample library companies like Soundbank that make sample libraries. Normal people, normal composers make sample libraries and this is a wonderful idea both for the composer and for the assistant. Learning how to make a sample library does involve learning how to make basic script, basic code, in order to be able to facilitate the uh, use of the samples that you have within the software contact. And for a composer, it can be useful when you have a project, you can create a unique sound really easily by doing some recordings and then putting these sounds into a sample instrument and being able to use these recordings in a way that are maybe more intuitive, maybe more time efficient because you're able to trigger these recordings when you need them within the score without having to move audio files and cut audio files all the time. Now for an assistant, actually it's very exciting as an idea to be able to create your own sample instruments because they are useful in a number of ways. You are able to really impress the composer that you're working for when you can make them a sample library because as I say, not everyone needs to know how to do this. So when you're able to make custom sounds for your composer without having to take up their time, then it's brilliant because it means that you're able to, to do a wonderful job for them, go a step further than they were expecting and stand out. If you would like to know about how to get your sample libraries into your doors and how to create your own sample libraries, stay tuned. Subscribe, give us a like, and then we will be able to make the content that tells you exactly how to do this because we would love to be able to help you guys out in making more sample libraries because we love those. And also just to be able to do your jobs without being stressed about all of these technicalities. Comment below to let us know what you thought of the video and if there are any other hints and tips that you have for ways to use sample libraries, if you're a composer, if you're an assistant, or if you just want to tell us how much you like sample libraries, then tell us below. Okay, so happy sound making everyone and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!